Hi, good evening everybody. So tonight's session is about exercises to help if you overpronate in your feet. Um, my name is Mareka. I'm one, the physiotherapist from sportsinjuryphysio.com where you can get online physiotherapy treatment for any of your injuries. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to first explain how come the foot can sometimes overpronate and what I mean with overpronate. Then I'll walk you through, we're going to break it down. We're going to break it down into the different components of how you get the foot stronger because there are actually two parts to overpronation. And then I'm going to show you some exercises. So let's dive right, right in. Now, if you're new to, to the live streams, then if you've got any questions, just pop them in the comments. If you're watching this on replay, make sure that you ask questions as well. And especially if you're on Facebook, if you tag me, then I'll make sure that I answer it because then I see it. Sometimes the notifications don't show up immediately for me. Excellent. So what do I mean with overpronation? That's when your foot turns in excessively as you walk and run. Now, it's important to understand that all people's feet turn in as part of the terminal stance phase. So if I can show you what I mean with that. So as we walk, as you, you make contact usually with your outside of your heel, then you come over the heel and then you're, let me just do that again because it didn't focus. You make contact on the outside of the heel. I'm over showing this and then the foot moves in and twists in a bit and then you push off. So if you, I show you this from the front, so you, side of the foot, roll in, over and then back. But for some people, it in, it rolls in too much. That's overpronation. And what can happen then is you can strain the tendons on the inside. So your tip post tendinopathy, that's one of the main causes for that. You can strain your ligaments there. You can even, if you see what happens with the knee, you can even strain your knee or your hip can get an impingement. Um, ITB syndrome can be caused by that if there's a lot of stress on that bit. It's very common if people have had an ankle sprain for the foot, if they haven't rehabilitated it properly, for the foot to sit in a slightly inverted position like that afterwards. So ideal posture for the foot is that you have a little bit, let me just bring this down that you can see my foot better. I'm actually going to put it on the red thing because this is nice and hard. I think my mat otherwise allows me to dip in. So normal posture is that you have a little bit of an arch in your foot okay so a little bit of an arch there now mine's not very high some people have really high arches some people have really flattened arch arches and that doesn't mean that that's a problem it's just how their arch looks but we want the arch on the right and the left to be relatively similar to each other so a little bit of an arch there is a good thing and then you want your foot to be in a neutral position. So if you look at this part of the foot compared to your um, your lower leg, can you see that my line is kind of straight there when I'm in that position? Now, if I allow my foot to roll in, can you see that it creates an angle, that bit with the middle of my foot? Now, if I walked with it like that, I will end up compressing this part of the joint. And there's a condition called sinus tarsi syndrome where people develop pain on the outside of the foot a while after they've had an ankle sprain and it doesn't want to go away and it's not the ligaments it's actually inflammation in that part of the joint because it's squashing so much so if you're seeing a large angle at your foot when you look at it that the foot is not a neutral that's where we want it eventually to be so how do you get it there there are two kind of components to it and i'm going to keep this camera focused on my on my foot for now if you don't mind so we've got the component of the foot needs to turn kind of from there whoops i'm moving my leg i shouldn't from there to there but also if the arch is quite flattened the arch needs to lift up like that so if i can show you from there so if my arch is quite flat i need to lift the arch up and we're going to practice those different components. So we're going to work on the muscles inside the foot to get them stronger to support the arch. And we're going to also work and strengthen the muscles where the tendons run um, of the tip ant and the tip post um, that can that pull on this part of the foot that can support the arch. So the first exercise is very simple. You need a slippery surface. So I'm using my book and you need a towel. And what we're going to do is you're just going to gather the towel with your toes like little monkey toes and you can sit in front of the tv and do this and you can even if you squeeze it count 
till five or to 10 and then let go and count again. And what you want to see is don't just do it gently, make sure that you get the arch, the whole foot, the arch as you do it so that you strengthen the muscles inside. If you've done it for a while and you find it quite easy, then what you can do is you can just pop something heavy on this part so that like a bottle of water or a shoe or something that it now becomes a weight that you're actually pulling closer towards you. So it's harder work. You may find at the beginning when you do this that your foot actually goes into a cramp and that's often when the muscles are quite weak or they're just not used to it. That will get better as you get stronger with it. So that's exercise number one to get the flexes inside the foot to strengthen up. Now, the second exercise is very similar, but if I can show you with that one, you were squeezing your toes that they're all crunched up. With this one, I want you to press your toes straight into the floor. So you can see my toes are not bending. I'm pressing them, and especially the big toe, I'm pressing hard into the floor. So it's as if you're pushing your thumb down. So let me show you from the side again. I'm pushing my big toe and my toes into the floor enough that I lift my arch off. But I'm not turning my foot out. I'm literally just pushing them straight into the floor so that it's so hard that I actually lift my arch off by doing that. And then I hold it and relax. So pushing the big toe into the floor and the other toes nice and straight and just counting till 10 or to 20 depending on how strong you are and relax. So that's another good exercise to strengthen the muscles in the foot that support the arch. Now, once you've practiced that, I want you to see if you can also push the big toe into the floor without actually lifting the ball of the toe off. So with the previous one, you were doing that. So straight toe, but the ball was coming off. Now, can you press the big toe into the floor but without lifting this up. Because remember, when you walk, this has to be flat on the floor. So see if you can do that, but do not let your other toes claw like that. So don't let them claw like that. You want them to be relaxed. You want to just squash the big toe in. So practice that for me as well. If you struggle to do that, take your finger, push it up, and then just push your finger down with your toe. That resistance often activates the brain that you realize how to actually do that. Okay. Now, the other two big muscles that supports the arch is the first one is the tip post. Tip post runs from there, comes across there and underneath the foot. And it basically does that movement. OK, the tip ant is from there, crosses over the ankle and then it comes and switches under the foot there. And again, it also pulls the foot up but it also turns the foot in. So we're going to strengthen both of them. And we'll do the tip post. Well, you kind of do the tip post and the tip, tip and together with doing inversion. You need an elastic, which I've tied to my bed. I hope it stays in place. Um, but you can see I tied it to my shoe because otherwise it comes off my foot and it drives me absolutely nuts. So I'll show you what you do. Now, you can be in many positions. You can be flat on the floor. I just don't have the space for that tonight, so I've decided I'm going to be sitting in a chair. You want the band around the front of the foot. So yes, by all means, you can do this barefoot. Mine just slips off if I do, so I've put it through my laces and then round to keep it in place. And I like to then cross my legs so that now I can take it from the outside and pull it down and in and up and hold it and then slowly release it again. So you don't want to see a jiggly movement. And then in and down and round and up and hold it. And I'm not moving my knee, I'm just moving my ankle. There we go. And again, and around and up. So this one strengthens tip post as well as tip ant. Okay, so it's a very nice one to do to get that stronger. Good, so then if you want to strengthen tip ant mainly, I'm just gonna take my shoe off for a second. We're gonna use dorsiflexion movement, okay? So pulling the toes up, 
But the problem is, if you do it with your with your toes sticking out, so like that, then other muscles also help the movement and we want to isolate the tip ant. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna flex our toes and keep them flexed throughout the movement. Okay, like that, with a band around it. But again, I'm gonna pop my foot into the trainer, otherwise the band slips off, but I'm gonna have my toes like that inside the trainer. Okay, and for this one, I'm actually gonna be flat on the floor. So, oh, papa. Let me just get this on. Oh, my poor trainers. <laughs> there we go. It's on. Good. So, remember, I'm now squeezing my toes, okay, and keeping them squeezed as I bring my foot up and slowly let it go down again and up and slowly let it go down again. So that then strengthens mainly my tibialis anterior, especially if I keep my toes all flexed while I'm doing it. There we go. So you could, of course, I think I can do this in sitting like this. If you wanted to do the inversion from here, you can just turn your foot in and slowly out. So you could actually just sit on the floor and do that as well. It really doesn't matter where you are as long as you get the range of movement that you're looking for. Good, now those are the components, but they're great to strengthen the muscles up, but that doesn't mean that you're gonna control your arch when you're standing or walking because you've learned how to walk with it in the wrong position. So you've got to retrain that. And I'll show you how I start people to get their feet into better arch positions. And the first thing is that you are going to practice it in sitting so that there's no weight going through, that you can just concentrate on getting the arch right. And then once you're good in sitting, then you concentrate on doing it when you're standing. And then what I find is best, whenever you think about it, you try and correct your arches. So when you're standing in a queue, you think about where are my feet? What am I doing with my feet? Because you'll often find that you've become accustomed to just hanging with your feet in. If you find that, then correct them and get them in a good position. But let me show you first how to do it in sitting. Okay, so again, I'm just gonna focus on my feet here. Actually, I'm gonna, can you see? That should work, yes. So what we're looking for is when we're standing, you have to feel equal pressure under the triangle that's formed by the ball of the big toe, ball of the little toe, and your heel. Often when people try to correct their arches, they tend to roll them out, that the, the big toe comes off the floor. You have to make sure that the ball is in contact when you're there. Now, look at your, I'm gonna over pronote mine for now. So have a look at your arches, where are they? Look at the angle. So what we're gonna do is we want to roll them out and also bring the arch up into a more neutral position. Okay, so how do I do that? It's a combination of that movement that we practiced and also a combination of that movement that we practiced. So what I find the easiest for me is if I've got it there to think of rolling it out a little bit but not lifting my big toe up okay and then also just pushing my big toe nice and hard into the floor but you'll notice these toes are totally relaxed they're not squishing up like that okay i'm just pushing my big toe into the floor but my big toes ball is still on there and i can feel equal pressure under both of those okay so if i can show you from the side what's happened there is my foot was there and i just rolled it so that that bit lift, lifted up, but this is still on the floor. And if you're still struggling there, you can push your big toe hard but straight into the floor to just get this to lift up. Okay, so let's see if I can do that with both. So we're gonna do that and we're gonna do that. Now, I've got my arches there. Can I keep it while I'm standing up? So I'm gonna get them in a good position and then I'm gonna stand up. 
There we go. Now, while you're standing, allow them to collapse in. And then see if you can bring them back out by using your, your feet. Try not to just turn your knees out. Try to feel that you're actually using your feet to get them out there. And then also just press a little bit with your big toe into the floor that you can get the arch to kind of activate. Once you can find that you find that easy, then you've got to balance on one leg and see if you can keep that. And if you find that your arch turns in, bring it back out. It's not allowed to, or it's too difficult. Put the foot down, get the arch into the position first. I find it useful if I bend my knee a little bit and then see if you can hold it. So let me show you from that, from this angle. So I've got my arch in a good position and I balance. Now, if I find that it, it rolls in, then you've got to try and correct it. If you can't correct it, put the other one down and correct it and then balance again. Okay, so you first have to practice it a lot, the different components. So practice the lifting the arch up, practice turning the foot in, and then practice putting that together and just seeing, can I correct it a bit? If your foot has been in that position for a very long time, it's not going to correct perfectly at the beginning. These exercises are extremely annoying exercises because you may find that your brain is totally not connected to your feet at the beginning. Okay, and that's fine. I see that often. It makes for a very good laugh. So just keep practicing the component parts of it and then eventually try to put it together. It will eventually come. It's just that our brains are often very un are disconnected from our feet. So just keep at it. Um, if you get frustrated, leave it. Come back to it tomorrow or later in the day and you may find that, oh, all of a sudden you can actually do it. So little bits of correction, you'll, especially if your feet are very turned in or you haven't done anything um, um, after you've retrained or after you've sprained them, it can take a long time to come back. Now, let me know if you've got any questions. Um, I'll be keeping an eye on the comments. And remember, if you need more help with an injury, you're welcome to consult me online. The link is all in the description of the video. Take care.